everybody. We are from Milwaukee to Nashville covering everything Admirals, Predators, and Florida Everblades related. We are brought to you by the wonderful folks at Hockey Locker 2002 West Howard Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. You can get all your referee gear, just to appreciate Chris. You can get all your Admirals gear, which will make Chris happy. Go buy an Admirals jersey. Make him happy. Make him smile. See how right, angry he is. Disco. And uh, also, you could get uh, the White Predators jerseys. Uh, you could get Minnesota Wild jerseys. You could get old retro uh, hockey jerseys. Um, and you could get all your skating and hockey needs, and also your figure skating and inline hockey needs. Also, you could check them out at hockeylockermilwaukee.com or visit them where? Uh, 2002 West Howard Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Did you give the phone number? Uh, yeah, you can call them at 414-800-7585. All right, so today the Predators play the Washington Capitals. The best team in the NHL. Just yeah. got to throw it out there. Yep, they are the number one team in the NHL right now. And, uh, yeah, I, literally the best team in the NHL. Um, I did, uh, there did the, before we get into the game, I did want to say a uh, 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 big congratulations. To, uh, and in a weird way, I want to do stick taps for Ovi. Because before the game, Ovechkin came out in a practice jersey that's had a number 24 on it. And he's going to uh, raffle that off. And all of the proceeds will go to uh, Kobe Bryant uh, and his wife's uh, foundation to help homeless. It's not really a congratulations. That's a good job. Big well, difference good charity work. congratulations and saying good job. Well, I congratulate good job, him. Good I, I can, cry, can congratulate him on his good charity work. Wow, I like how you spun it. But either way, good job, Obi. You know, um, he's a good guy, even though he likes to drink. <laughs> Don't we all at times? Ugh. All right. Um, also, uh, with tonight's goal, Ovechkin is uh, pretty high up there on the career NHL list. Correct. Um, he uh, passed today uh, Steve Eiserman, if I remember correctly. According to what I'm looking at, he tied the Eiserman. Either, all right, it's, from what I'm seeing, the Eiserman and Ovechkin both have 692 career goals. But according to what they were saying on TV, they, he passed him. So you're going to believe the network that you hate. Trust me, you hate NBC. It's uh, no... Well, he wouldn't, no do, he wouldn't do a video package for him tying him. He wouldn't do a video package for him passing him, however. Well, he would also do a video package asking uh, to be invited to Ovechkin party because he saw how much uh, Ovechkin likes to party. <laughs> wouldn't you do a video package to get somebody to invite you to their party? Yeah. Just saying... All right, so uh, uh, enough beating around the bush, or are we gonna beat around the bush some more? No, nah, we're gonna get into the stats so you can Crap. get out of here. All right, uh, let's see here. Uh, it was five four Predators in regulation. I was wrong. I said the Predators were gonna get smacked around left and right. You should say that about tomorrow's game too, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, have you seen, dude? Do me a favor. Go on a daily face off. You look at the Devils' line and you tell me if their defense is as horrible as we think it is. I stay corrected when I talk crap about the Devils. You know. Anyways, uh, shots on goal were 33-24 in uh, Washington. Face-off percentage was 52% Capitals, 48% for the Predators. Uh, both teams were 1-4 on the power play. Preds were 1-4, for four, Capitals 1-5. for five. Uh, penalty minutes were 12 for the Preds, 10 for the Capitals. Well, the Capitals out physical the Preds. Uh, 30 hits and the Predators had 18. Uh, block shots were 19 12 in favor of the Preds. Capitals had 14 giveaways and the Predators only had 7. All right, and yes, uh, Ovechkin did pass uh, Iserman. Really? Yes. According to NBC Sports and ESPN. Wow, so you're going to believe the evil four letter that don't give a crap about hockey, and you're also going to believe NBC, a company that you don't like. Pretty much. Okay. I mean, when those two say it, it's kind of when it comes to sports, you, you don't question so, it. <laughs> you don't question it. So you question what the NHL, so you don't question the NHL? Oh, I question them. I just don't question everything. <laughs> uh, 
I'm confused. They yeah. don't have today's game up yet. They don't even have it on his stat sheet. Okay. Anyway, yeah, just, so, just keep reading. Just keep reading. All right, so scoring in, me. It's scoring in the... If I could actually get this computer to work with me today. Uh-oh. And we thought we had the technical issues worked out today. Coming into this show, we thought we had our tech issues solved. All right, so Richard Panic scored the first goal for the Capitals with an assist from Hagelin, his 10th, Panic 6th. Then, Jared Gennardi scores his first NHL goal. Way to go, Captain. Our captain. Get your own captain, guys. Um, he, he is currently still the Milwaukee Admirals captain. Uh, that's his first goal. And uh, an assist from Forsberg, his 18th. Then, oh, you said it that way so Predators fans don't rip you? Yeah, pretty much. They're going to rip us regardless, right? It's what they do. Oh, well. Yeah, right? They mm -hmm. don't like it? Bite me. That's the spirit. Good job. All right, um, let's keep her going. Um, sure. uh, Mikel Granlin, go. Mikel Granlin scored his 10th on the power play with an assist <clears> from <throat> Forsberg, his 9th, and Turris, his 14th. Then Rocco Grimaldi scored with a beautiful pass from Roman Yossi. Yep. Um, his ninth and an assist from Yossi, his 35th, and Benito, his 14th. Then uh, Alex Ovechkin scored yeah. his 35th with an assist from UC Soros. It was kind of a running joke. Oh. Ha, ha, ha. Unassisted, okay. Yeah, Saros Law mishandled the puck, and the puck went in front of the net, and you gave Alex Ovechkin a gift-wrapped in gold. Well, uh, good job, Ovechkin. Good job. Um, second Rich period. Richard Panic scored the first goal of the second period with his seventh unassisted. Then Tom Wilson scored his 16th with an assist from Eller. And Ovechkin, Eller's 18th, Ovechkin 17th. For those keeping track, that's Panic's second goal of the game. Um, and that was also, like I said, on the power play. Then in the third, it was all Predators. Panic, um, uh, Wilson power play, yeah. Um, yeah. Ryan Johansson scored his 11th unassisted with a shorthanded goal. And then Yannick Weber scored his first of the season with an assist from Ham Hughes, his 6th, and Robin... Ryan Johansson, his 18th. Now, before I get into finishing off that goal, a big assist should really go to Mikel Granlin, who screamed the ever-lucky being heck out of the goalie and took out the defenseman in the same sense. So, he made that goal happen. So, um... I just had a thought. Shots of the first period were 7-15 Washington. Shots of the second period were 7-14 Washington. Shots of the third period were 10-4 Nashville. Shot totals were 33 for Washington, 24 for Nashville. Three stars of the game were... Uh, third star of the game was Richard Panic. Second star of the game was Yannick Weber. And first star of the game with a goal and an assist was Ryan Johansson. In that... If I can get this to go. Let's put this. Uh, Brandon Holpe was in net for the Caps. Saros was in net for the Purs. Saros was in net for the Purs, stopping 29 of 33. I keep getting notifications like crazy. Sorry, folks. It's not wanting to load. All right, Brandon Holpe stopped 19 of 24. With a .792 save percentage, referees were Danny O'Rourke and Gislon Heber. Linesmen were Scott Dreskel and Mark Schuick. Uh, head coach for Nashville is John Hines. Uh, head coach for Washington is Todd Rendren. Uh, scratches for Nashville were uh, Yakov Trenin and Matt Irwin. Scratches for Washington was Travis Boyd. So they only had one scratch. So, thoughts. Was this a good step? Bad step? What are your thoughts on this game? <laughs> you want my honest thoughts or you want me to uh, kind of uh, uh, sugarcoat? 
Sugar coating would be polite because you know they did win. I, honestly, <laughs> I thought this game was a fluke because the uh, capitals are no slouch and the predators are, have a whole bunch of issues. Honestly, I think this was just a fluke and they caught the capitals having a down night. That's what I personally feel. Like the predators, they have a lot of issues. They always take a step forward and a couple steps backwards. You know this is true. You can't even deny it. You know they have a lot of issues. You can't deny it. I honestly think this was a fluke victory. I did not see the Predators getting a single victory the rest of the month. And, well, well out of the next five games, including tonight, I wasn't expecting the Predators to get a win. Tomorrow, I'm expecting the Preds to get a win. But it'll be difficult because the Devils' uh, defense is actually better than people want to give it credit for. <sighs> and that kind of segues me into the preview for the Devils tomorrow. Hey, you said you wanted my honest opinion. I honestly thought this was a fluke. All right, so, yeah. Um, with that being said, um, on to our next game, which is the Devils. Um, this year, the Predators' record against them is... 1-0. and Their only meeting this season was back on December 7th. The Predators won 6-4 in regulation. This game is going to be in uh, New Jersey. At 6.30, you can watch it on NBCSN. Yeah, believe it or not, back-to-back -back nationally televised games. I wonder, is there a certain commissioner paying attention to a certain podcast? Because it seems like whenever we complain about stuff on this show, things get done. I appreciate the notoriety, guys. You don't need to name us, but take our ideas. We're full of good ones. Yes, like moving the Chicago Wolves. Poke, uh, poke, poke, poke. <laughs> all right. Well, on the season, uh, there are Front line of forwards, uh, left wing Jesper Brett. He has eight goals, ten assists. Uh, Nico Heeshire, uh, Heeshire, 12 goals, 18 assists. And then you got Kyle Palmieri, uh, 17 goals, 15 assists. Uh, their second forward line pairing, uh, left wing Blake Coleman, 19 goals, 8 assists. Uh, Travis Zajac, uh, six goals, 13 assists. He's still playing. And then Nikita Gusev, eight goals, 21 assists. There's nobody scary on the third line. I mean, Jack Hughes, he has six goals, 11 assists. Uh, Wayne Simmons, five goals, 14 assists. And, uh, Pavel Zaka, three goals, 15 assists. And then, I don't know, the fourth line doesn't really stand out to me. Uh, their first defensive pairing, uh, P.K. Subban, he has six goals, five assists. Andy Green, one goal, eight assists. Uh, the second defensive pairing of Damon Silverson and Sammy Votnin. Uh, Severinson, he has six goals, 11 assists. Votnin, five goals, 17 assists. And other than that, it's just kind of garbage. But I noticed something in their last five games. I'm going to give you the guys you should probably keep an eye on because they have actually been heating up. Okay, I would keep an eye on uh, Blake Coleman in his last five games. He has five goals. Uh, Travis Zajac has three assists and a goal. Nikita Gusev, two assists and a goal. Uh, Nico Hirshire got uh, two goals and an assist. So those guys are pretty, uh, are catching fire right now in their last five games. On the defensive side of things, uh, PK got a goal in his last five. Uh, Green has a goal and two assists in his last five. The rest of the defense is pretty crappy. Will Butcher, he has uh, five assists. That's all within the last five. So it's a bit of a mixed bag. Like I said, it's probably going to be tougher than we think because, uh, believe it or not, the Devils are actually trying not to suck. And but also the remember that they put like up a five spot against the, the teams they're playing lately have been the Red Wings, 
Yeah. The Senators, <laughs> the uh, they played the Kings, yeah. and they played San Jose. So yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. So if you uh, take out the numbers that it gave you for the last five, but if you look at the whole season totals, they're not as horrible as people want to give them credit for. All right, so I'm I mean, gonna... if you think about the East, ain't that big of a slouch when it comes to competitiveness. I mean, don't the Devils play in the exact same division as the Capitals? It's not a bad division. Oops. Other one. Yeah. Yeah, because the Devils and Capitals, they're in the same division, and it's not that its not that easy of a division. <sighs> you know, don't you hate that? You think we have our issues solved, and yet this happens. Yeah, pretty much. All right, so the Devils are in their last ten are four, five, and one. They're on a one-game win streak. Um, well, they They're won. in last place in their division, but look at their division and who they have ahead of them. That's a pretty difficult task. Yeah, you got New York, Philadelphia, Carolina, Columbus, New York Islanders, and the you have the Rangers, the Flyers, the Hurricanes. The Blue Jackets, the Islanders, the Pittsburgh Penguins, and then you have the Washington Capitals. Yeah, it's, it's a difficult division. Man. But then again, if you also look at the opponents they've been playing, Ottawa, 18 wins, Detroit, 12 wins. Um, who, in your opinion, who has the currently the most difficult division in the entire NHL, seeing how you have that ability to... Ours. You say that every year. Um, let's put it this way. Uh, last place in the Central, Minnesota, 23 <coughs> wins. 21 losses and 6 overtime losses. Okay. That's a winning record. Huh. That's the last place team and they have a winning record. Hmm. Not exactly a high winning record, but the over-under isn't that good. Uh, true that. Because overtime losses only count as a half a loss. Yeah, and the only reason I and the only reason I say it that's a bit of a bias is because well, okay, let's put it this way: division. Are you saying that the reason that they don't rack up a bunch of cups is because they wear each other down during the regular season? Yeah, pretty much. That's what SEC football fans say. <laughs> All right, well, if you really look at it, look at the West right now. You have Anaheim, nineteen wins, twenty five losses. Yeah. Los Angeles, eighteen wins, twenty seven losses. The Sharks. Well, if you're looking at bad teams in the West, the Sharks ain't the greatest either. Yeah, 22 wins, uh, 25 losses. And then you got Vegas with 25 wins, 20 losses. Arizona with 26 wins, 20 losses. It it it, it gets it's, it's Currently pretty. Currently, the uh, the two uh, the two wild card teams would be in the West. Yeah. Well, obviously, each conference is wild card team. Um, and then, I mean, if you really look at it, here's how bad the, uh, uh, was that the Atlantic is? Yeah. Uh, Detroit, 12 wins, 35 losses. Ottawa's 18 wins, 23 losses. Uh, Montreal's 500 right now. Yeah, 22 and 22. And then Buffalo's only a game above 500 with seven overtime losses. And then Toronto with 27 wins, Florida with 28, Tampa Bay with 29, um, and then yeah, Boston. Boston will, right on. Hey, what's Boston's record compared to the Capitals? They got 29 of what, and the Capitals are... Okay. Now, I'm going to make sure I wasn't giving the Capitals more credit than they deserve. But, but yeah, yeah, honestly, I think tonight's game was just a fluke. They caught Washington on a down night. I think it was more that they, you know, they... I won't be mad if the Predators are getting better, but I'm just saying, in my honest opinion, I thought tonight. I think good. that in in the case of defense, they were horrible as usual. However, in the offensive sense, they were actually better. Yeah. They have actually put up points, which was a problem. If you don't put the puck in the net, you could give up seven goals and lose every night. Yeah. You you put the puck in the net and games like this where it's five four, you could still compete. All right, well, break down the Devils goalies. All right, so the Devils goaltenders are Mackenzie Blackwood, 36 games played, 32 starts, 12 or 15 wins, 12 losses, 6 overtime losses, with a 2.95 goals against average, 1 shutout, and a .906 save percentage. Then we have Louis Domingue. Louis Domingue has played in 11 games played, 9 games started, 3 wins, 5 losses, with a 
0.883 save percentage and a 3.66 goals against average. Then we have Gilly Sen, who has been the up and down guy. Um, he has two games uh, two games played, one uh, one start, one loss, with a 0.902 save percentage and a 3.4 goals 3.42 goals against average. And then we have Corey Schneider, who has played in nine games. He has zero wins. Six losses, one overtime loss. He started seven. Um, he has a .852 save percentage and a 4.65 goals against average. Don't mind me, I'm just playing count the amount of teams Yammer Yager has been on. <laughs> All right. <coughs> We've been on nine. For those of you watching, so starting to, been so if the playoffs started today, St. Louis, Colorado, Dallas are in. Vancouver, Vancouver Calgary, and Edmonton are in. Arizona and Vegas are in. As far as the East, the Capitals are in. The Bruins are in. The Penguins are in. The Rangers are in. The Lightning are in. Florida Panthers are in. Uh, the Blue Jackets are in. And then those jerks down in Carolina are in. Yep, leaving one, two, three, four can Canada teams out. Only two would be in, and that would be oh, that would be actually the whole West. There's three, and that are not accounted for, and they're all in the top three in the Pacific: uh, Vancouver, Calgary, and Edmonton. Yeah, so Canada has three teams in. Yep, likelihood of the That's staying that way. Who knows? Yeah, let's Vancouver's see how. Vancouver's actually playing good this year. Yep, we'll see where we're at. Um, so this has been from Milwaukee to Nashville. We'll oh, see program you. note: we're doing in the system on Friday because Saturday we'll be getting here kind of late. Yes. Um. But yeah. I, I was, I just, yeah, I was gonna talk to you about that off camera, but okay. <laughs> see, Works for me. We're on the same page. Uh, let's switch it to Friday. We'll get into Yeah, it's on Friday this hours. week. Does, it doesn't mean I won't release it on Saturday. I can do so. Maybe we're just going to record it Friday. Correct. Um, so don't forget to check out our friends over there at Hockey Locker, 2002 West Howard Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. You can call them at 414 800 7585 or visit hockeylockermilwaukee.com. Subscribe to us on YouTube and click that little bell. Yep, use this and click, click, click. Yeah, come on, Facebook people. Just go over to YouTube and subscribe. Watch about 30 seconds and we're good. Yeah, watch about a bunch of videos for 30 seconds. Pop and there you go. Yep. You'll be doing us a favor.